not a while of all of your things. <laughs> Think of some of the jokes. You can't hear you now. <laughs> and uh, thanks to my classmates for helping me out this morning. And now, so the goal of my thesis is to establish a connection between the city and the river. Um, I'll draw to a particular site in Georgetown. Uh, the historic is significant neighborhood in the city. And what we hear about this particular site was the convergence of all these different layers, infrastructure, um, recreational aspect, activity, um, the Sino Canal, the uh, nice park space playing through the city. Um, what really stood out to me was this, the lack of connection between the upper part of the city and the waterfront, especially at the particular site. Um, the sequence from the city to the river is an underutilized part. Um, it's got a very narrow footbridge, it's very heavily trafficked, bikers, pedestrians, and the like. Um, also, there's an existing ice house, a former ice house being repurposed into a restaurant and a gym. And also underneath the White Coast Freeway. Um, this is a park at the end of the site. Um, the columns of the infrastructure is along Water Street, and ultimately the connection to the water. Um, so what's important about reconnecting to the waterfront? Um, so many cities trace their historic growth to the water. Uh, industry, uh, trade, flourish on the waterfront, and, but eventually um, the film disuse and disrepair. Um, so recently there's been a shift in planning to redesign these waterfront public spaces, uh, bringing um, people to the water. Um, in this case, this Olympic Sculpture Park in Seattle, uh, Allegheny Riverfront and Pittsburgh, crossing over um, a roadway similar to the way it crossed over at the site. And also the East River Esplanade in New York, uh, where they created a pier extending out over the riverfront. Uh, in Washington, D.C. especially, uh, Many efforts are being made to transform these waterfront spaces. If you look at the Yards Project, the Ward, um, the proposal for the 11th Street Bridge, as well as uh, Stephen Paul's Kennedy Center expansion, <coughs> and the site directly the Georgetown Waterfront Park. So, a brief uh, historical overview of Georgetown. It began as an Indian or Native American fishing village. As the colonial settlers came in, it uh, turned into a uh, tobacco trading port. Um, over time, different infrastructures came in, the canal, the bridge, um, to reinforce these industrial uh, motives. If you see in 1903, the waterfront was divided into um, lots of land, warehouses, uh, piers, and wharf. Um, flooding was also an issue, which also led to the Decline of the waterfront to where it is today, or where it was before today, um, just surface parking lot is covering the entire stretch. Uh, today, the connections to the waterfront in Georgetown are in Washington Harbor and um, half of Sweden, uh, more on the eastern edge of the waterfront. So, looking um, more particularly at the site, um, you see the figure around the transition from the residential district above to the more uh, large-scale office complexes and um, converted warehouse buildings. Um, you see the infrastructure that um, subdivide and cross over the site, M Street, the canal, uh, the White House Freeway, as well as Key Bridge. Um, various canal crossings that uh, in this particular one of the site, some vehicular and some pedestrian. And in my opinion, this uh, or from my analysis, this is one of the most heavily uh, trafficked crossings as well as the Washington Harbor crossing. There's, there's steep uh, topographical change from the northern part of Georgetown to the southern part, especially around the area of the site, um, with a very steep drop. It's surrounded by, uh, Georgetown surrounds by various neighborhoods in West End, New Pond, Hoggy Bottom, and Roslyn in Virginia, each with their own um, different amenities. Um, primarily Metro and Metro and Roslyn and Metro and Bottom, they're all 
Um, you see the outer circle is a, ten, a mile radius, so about a 10 minute walk from the metros. Maybe a connect, connection and resource on uh, public transportation into Georgetown, that's it. Also, mixed materials crossing through Georgetown uh, to different parts of the city. So, moving into the proposed thesis design. Uh, the design involved an understanding of uh, the different contexts of the site, um, main axes from 34th Street, um, Key Bridge, also Whitehurst Freeway crossing over the site. Uh, with uh, these crossings, uh, I tried to reestablish an edge uh, <coughs> promenade from the northern part of the city to the southern part of the city, um, broken up into three zones the northern zone featuring uh, an aerial tram station, which was a proposal for um, Georgetown. They're doing a study to, um, a feasibility study to see whether bringing a gondola aerial tram system into Georgetown from Roslyn Metro would be appropriate. Um, a central zone occupied by a sort of cultural event space, and the southern zone, a new boathouse, um, an object building on landscape, and a new park connected to the water. So the architecture of Prama through the site um, took into took topography into account uh, with the steep topographical change, um, ramping strategies, as well as the bridge, um, different stairs, between uh, direct routes to the waterfront for nest stairs. So, um, starting from the top of the site, if you exit from the aerial tram station into this public plaza, the tram station is placed at the um, western edge of the site, so it deflects visitors from this crowded intersection to the plaza and bring people from the east in. Um, the accessible route would take you through a landscape park space uh, to a bridge crossing and a platform overlooking the canal. Um, so, this bridge crossing would we'll take you next into this cultural institution. You'd be given the choice to either um, continue along a ramp that would take you to the Seno Canal, if you see here, um, and also wrap around the building, uh, and then continue to walk the water street. Um, if given the choice, if you choose to enter the building, um, this cultural institution, uh, it was um, with this largely intended public route crossing through the site, um, several frameworks were uh, involved in the design. One, the flexibility, uh, transparency, the creation of views, as well as um, contextual and climatic considerations. Um, the goal being to uh, act as a platform for unlimited cultural interaction uh, in both known and unforeseen ways with people from all walks of life passing through the site. Uh, so, flexibility. Um, to accommodate for a variety of programs, a very simple structural system in space to allow for a large open floor plate. Um, here you see different layouts, possibly exhibitions, um, banquets, galleries, lecture halls, and musical performances, as well as cafes and restaurant components or catering kitchens. Um, also, the ramp system moving around the site. Um, reinforces the transparency as the ramps uh, cross through the building. You can look into these different event spaces uh, happening. This is the ramp along the um, northern part of the site, moving from the bridge level to level four. Um, so also, this franchise was uh, intended to reinforce the creation of views uh, with uh, the CNO Canal along the western edge or the northern, northern part. Um, also the Whitehurst Freeway, about 40 feet um, above the ground, uh, moving up and above the Whitehurst Freeway to create a view over was important. Uh, if you look in this ground, this is at the <coughs> upper, upper, um, upper space, looking over the freeway um, into the city to create a context of the city. Um, along the canal, ramping down along the canal, a new um, landscape. Um, so, being directly next to this freeway, as well as uh, with a very uh, so with a southern exposed facade, uh, 
So the, the ramping strategy as well as a louver system, which you can see here, so it acts as a buffer both um, deflecting solar radiation, glare, um, also an acoustical buffer from the noise of the freeway. So if you continue uh, around the promenade, either through the building or around the building, you are re uh, you, you place back on that 34th Street axis to the connection to the waterfront park and plaza. Um, the boathouse is an object. The boathouse is a, there's another proposal for the boathouse. It's a much needed, um, as all the other boathouses are very um, over, overused and crowded. So a boathouse is an object in the landscape sort of providing an anchor at that end um, and a new park space. So ultimately at this juncture, um, the city becomes reconnected with the waterfront um, through a architectural promenade from the northern part of the city through each of these spaces to the water. And at the sound, if you have any questions or comments. Does the promenade also continue on the 34th axis, or do you have to go around it? Um, it, it does. It's, it won't be accessible, however. Um, just there's that bridge coming down. Uh, you would have to re-enter the canal space and come down through um, a stair or a terrace down the street. Uh, and then that continues across the, the freeway, under the freeway to that space. So it's reinforcing this axis. But it is possible. Yeah. It's not going around. So is there a bridge over the, the uh, yeah. underneath the freeway that's the street? Uh, well, it would be, be at street level. It would take a jump around. Yeah. Um, okay. What's that pavilion again? Sorry, that, the corner of. Bridge and, and what's what's the new pavilion you designed there or that building? This building? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, so with the proposal of the um, aerial tram and with the intended um, public sequence here, I thought of bringing people in to the site, the connection. Uh, it would be, if you see in some of the precedents, they were um, in Roosevelt Island and then in Portland, there were, um, I guess, two um, nodes. One, being Roosevelt Island and one being a medical center at the top of the campus. So, um, oh, a simple well, tram. Why did you choose oh, I mean, not to show I mean, the tram itself? I didn't even yeah, know. Yeah, when everything else is based oh, on. Yeah, this, okay. right, right now, uh, just the. That's not a change. That's a tram. Support for the tram would be in, is in place. Well, that's not. He has yes, done one important distinction, though. The, the, the study today has the tram on the other side of the bridge. He's located it on this side of the bridge. The theory being for the tram that they need a connection to Metro, which Georgetown is left high and dry by the Metro system. And so the head of the, of the Georgetown bid has done a study showing, you know, an aerial tram can connect into the Roswell Metro station. That's the... No, no, that wasn't my question. My question was, since so much of your project is based on the tram, why did you draw in? Um, that's, uh, I guess, uh, I just... I mean, I, I asked for that because... It's under construction. The nature of <laughs> the forms that are suggested it's by the tram... It's that should be, I guess, very, very, very Well, it's, a, you know, it's a very interesting point. It, it's, it's really easy to get lost in the sort of... A lot of detailed development of your project and yeah. potentially lose sight of some element which for the people that you're going to present it to is a really key ingredient in the entire thing. Yeah. Well, not only that, I, I think the forms that you would derive from a, acknowledging, you know, the structure of, of this kind of thing yeah. would have been informative and complementary to your brief. Yeah. Did, did you replace the existing bridge with a new bridge that connects yeah, to um, such so the existing the, the existing bridge was only uh, <coughs> four and a half feet across, and the new one did 15 foot. Well, didn't you show a slide of that same bridge back in the day? Is that no, a so bridge? The, the back in the day was the old aqueduct that they um, took out. You see here, that was the there's a, the first connection from George to the... Yeah, I'm talking bridge. about the small bridge over the canal, not the one. This one. 
Those today? Yeah. Go back. There. That thing. Oh, right. that's really I mean, that, that is something that's important. Actually, this, this might be further west. Oh. It's okay. a similar shot. It's not the same. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell us what happens on the other side of the group? The other side of the group, uh, on this side? Yeah. There's an existing park here, um, and also along here there are existing boat houses. <coughs> boat houses are high after school, as well as um, Potomac Boat Club, where they uh, rowing, um, there's a rowing dock from there. And that's where the, um, this aqueduct overlooks the key grid communities from that aqueduct. So there's the, the walkway that's now along the edge yeah. of the river. You can walk down the canal and then come out onto this platform. It's only the canal connection, it's not the water. Yeah, no, there's a stair here. But. Could you talk about how you derive the architecture character of the building? Then the inspiration to just the architecture of each of the So, it initially started with trying to create a ramping sequence, create an accessible route um, from this part to the waterfront. But this also add how will a person walk through your building in time of this event? How, how will a person walk through the building and walk? Where do I come from? Where do I come from? Okay. So that ramp came down here and as it crossed through the building, but if it's an accessible route down, why does it create an accessible route up? Mm -hmm. That's why the ramp is trying to continue up. Uh, so if you look in the plans, um, if you're, at, you're coming from... And mine is starting up there. Hmm? I'm starting up on the top. Yeah. So you cross if I'm a visitor, I'm, where am I starting? Starting from the northern part. Okay. So you're walking through this. You come down, or you come through this park landscape, uh -huh. or you come straight down, from, over to the bridge. Um, Can you go directly from that down, or you have yeah, to... Yeah, the existing street would remain in place. No, 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 I don't, but from here, from this point here. Do you have to go in the building, or can you go down? Uh, you, you have to go to. The you have to go into the building too. Not into the building. No, you uh, ramp along. This. So that's the bridge, and that's where that. So you have a choice to continue down the ramp to the canal, okay. or into the building. It's mm -hmm. it's the same sequence that exists today, except it crosses over the walkway and it is accessible. Okay. So it is optional to go into the building. Yeah. To me, the biggest thing with the target is it's really nice to see the movement and the rendering and all that. But this could be anywhere. It doesn't have to be Georgetown. What if this, because I, we know, okay, at least I, some of us have visited Georgetown, there's a particular character to it. Yeah. And I, you took a position here, either to embrace or not to embrace it. I'd like to know your thinking behind the character of the architecture at this point. To the context of George uh, uh, A lot of it had to do with the context, uh, lining up with the different axes. Um, I guess more like a more talking about a visualism facade. Uh, All glass building with no bricks. Is there a. Well, there is a brick, but there's not. <coughs> I don't think you just throw a brick into a building and say, no, I'm sorry. The there is the, the base of the building is just brick. It is? Um, you might want to point it out in this section. Yeah, I, I can yeah. appreciate it. Maybe. Yeah, and then um, up above, as I've driven along White Square so many times, and I just see how those facades kind of unfold. This is uh, this old warehouse, but then this is starting to this building is a new residential building that um, sort of starts to be a little bit more modern, but I think it does relate to the context. But it's, as it as you're like walking through, all those buildings unfold um, mm -hmm. in their character. You know? So I thought that. And this facade how it lines up with the existing building. Maybe not. At what level does last this, this freeway pass the building? Like, I mean, the cars are right here. Which floor? Okay, so at this point, it starts to drop down. It's 40 feet here and drops to 30 feet. So you get into the base of the building. Yeah, you know, under the bridge. Mm -hmm. um, you can see it up there. It shows that it's oh, right. Right. oh, there. Point it out in the structure. So, this, this ramp moves up to the bridge, and this is this ramp trying to go down. Um, 
So it's about 100 kilometers. As I recall, there's a street down there. Yeah, one is it. Is it go underneath the boat? Oh, yeah, the city. Yeah, so it continues to the boat houses. Um, so it's sort of a, 
and right now at the gym and the restaurant. So it's sort of um, at, at this um, at this junction, maybe like a, a very open public building. Would be I think one of the things we talked about in the committee was the fact that buildings oftentimes outlive their uses. And we talked about this building as possibly a kind of flexible loft building that could have exhibitions in it, it could have party space, rentals, you know, um, even lease it for office space here and there. And that, that it was a kind of building and perhaps a kind of location where one particular function might not be appropriate, but many different possible functions might be appropriate. Maybe you could argue about whether or not it's flexible enough for that sort of thing to be able to accommodate that. But I think the idea was, we talked about the committee, was to make something that had a kind of uh, a simple sort of open air and spatial feel about it so that a lot of different things could happen inside of it. I, I, I think for a building like, and, and I agree with the comment, this is an ambitious um, proposal for such a site. Um, I think a building like this to to um, even begin to succeed, uh, to me, has to do with function, as a matter of fact. In terms of how do you actually operate the building, where do you come in, how do deliveries come in, how do you actually propose for, if you're doing an exhibition, what kind of exhibitions uh, can this tolerate, or can you have, can you have events that will require catering, do you have kitchens, how, I mean, there's a lot that goes on by the building like this, um, and I admire you tackling such a concept. Um, it is difficult because um, I know this area so well. I worked for years on the redevelopment of this alleyway. Right here. Yeah. I worked on these buildings here. Yeah. I worked a little bit on this building. So I, I have a feeling for what goes on in here, and frankly, one of the biggest difficulties is actually how things operate. Yeah. And I understand this is a thesis and an academic project, and sometimes, you know, that's not the focus of, of the thing, but what I'm looking at now is a project that has merits in terms of its, uh, how intriguing it is, um, but at the same time, I'm having perhaps a little difficulty in understanding how it actually could be viable uh, as, as, a, as, as a building should be, or is it just a piece of architecture that is, uh, is there for, looks for being an object. This is just you know, a gallery or, or is it doing something more? There's some answers to those questions. The plans are often far away from you when you sit, but okay. um, you might want to talk about the disposition of the board, yes. the service entries, uh, the catering elements, yeah. uh, certain levels that you have thought about in this. Like, can you have a car show in here? Do you have elevators that can bring automobiles to the third well, floor? I mean, I don't know. I'm making stuff up. Like yeah, smart car. Yeah, smart yeah. car. Yeah. <laughs> but I think in that, you know, I'm just I, going to agree. You know, to me, it's more of a pavilion, yeah. you know, that, that accommodates a certain movement and could have casual uses with it. But I didn't hear you say that yeah. as much as I heard you say it was a, a kind of a, I heard the part about you know, things, activities going on in this building that people would come to visit, you know, whether, and, and I just wondered how many people <coughs> at what time, and at daytime or nighttime, and how it got there. And I went straight to how does a pavilion work as a flexible building? Um, I'm sorry, I didn't know what you asked. I guess it's just, just a technical uh, There is this that service entry uh, at the West End. Uh, and there's also a freight elevator here. Um, at the ground level, underneath those ramps, uh, the ramp structure, there is a loading and a kitchen. Um, at the ground level, where I think there would be a lot of the public bank um, function as well as the roof, the penthouse area, and the kitchen. I have a, I have a question. Where, where is the formal entrance of the building? Is this is the actual entrance of the facility? Uh, I, I guess the most formal, uh, unless you're you know, on the common level, the secondary entrance on the bridge. I mean, I can see this if this is properly designed, functionally, and all that. I can see this being amazing. I mean, people can come and actually, this becomes a, a, a catalyst to, to come here, people coming in, the, in this tram. And now, I wonder if this bridge then wouldn't be better 
Okay, but you close them yeah. so that you, you just go in. And then you actually have a formal entrance where you get dropped off. You know, celebrities can come here and, and the, you know, if the president wants to come to this building, well, how would that be? I don't know. I'm just thinking about these processional. <laughs> I think the, the way you would answer that is not, or it's a drawing we talked about that I don't see, which is I think we talked about a drawing, a perspective, standing here looking, seeing the waterfront which is why that bridge didn't go over there, so that when you came across here, you actually saw the water. And I don't, is that perspective anywhere up here? I don't see it. Do you see it? Okay, so that's something that would have probably, you know, solved that as a I know that, that, I know that the Latin, that's the, uh, the embassy, uh, Ukraine. Ukraine embassy or something like that. I think your two perspectives were the center. We know why it's sheer glass with no, Sun control creates problems inside. So uh, There's got to be some lines or something. Yeah, where the freeway, uh, the freeway is sort of giant shady, like and then above some of the loops. Is the freeway is a giant three solar problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a narrative about about this tram yeah. floating through the sky, arriving at this glassy thing, a lantern type element. Glows at night and day and fights against the movement of the lights on the bridge. Uh, I think there's a narrative that you could develop that would make this pavilion a more neutral kind of space because I think it truly is. But, but at the same time, the section just defies me because I'm imagining I do see the tram and here it comes, you know, down through there, coming to within about. 20 feet at the top of that building, and I wondered whether this zone against the bridge and under the tram wouldn't have affected the design of that building. Yeah, yeah I'd like to propose, because I, I think of this as this beautiful bridge, um, and stepping back from it, um, not only you should drive across the bridge and come to Georgetown, after uh, with your tram station so you can see through it. But the building going all the way up to the bridge, um, I find a little bit disturbing in the sense of, of, uh, of it's, it's really been shooting on it doesn't feel comfortable. Um, I see how you're using it to, to stop the, uh, the figure buildings and reaching some resolution. But I also wonder what if that would park all the way down and the boathouse is replaced with this building, but done as more of a terminus to the riverfront promenade rather than a, a true terminus rather than an object placed there that you have to go around because it's important. But if it were a public building, yeah. restaurant, or a place to get ice cream, or something like that, the other building would pull back, and it could even be taller than it is if it was pulled back to this ice cream. But um, because the landscape there and the celebration of that bridge, yeah. to me, it seems to be a and, and the bridge and the tram have become a couple. Yeah, yeah but I find the tram actually necessary. But, you do this but, uh, but, but let's say it's going to go in. You see, I, I still want to be able to see it. Yeah. Um, and because that bridge lit at night could be absolutely spectacular. And as a destination for this, the destination for this promenade, which starts several blocks down. And I know I took my class there. Yeah. Uh, to see that in space. Um, and yet it sort of died, <coughs> kind of went away as you went further up. Um, but how can you celebrate that? Because once you get under the bridge and past that, you can't get any further. Yeah. So you've got to turn and get back into the city. Um, and it's a better way to celebrate that movement back 
as much as it is now. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, the, the distance to the bridge, um, well, it's a 25 foot, maybe it's actually it's very close, but um, it was sort of one by the amount of ramp needed to take you down from that bridge level to that sort of extended all the way to the other bridge. I guess what I'm also reacting to is you either take the, the street sidewalk coming off the tram. What I want to do is, in a sense, come off of here, down here to the street, and be able to walk the street. It's coming across that I'm almost brought this way, but I know that's not your intention. Um, I'm not clear how this is resolved. <clears throat> but uh, that there needs, should be a way to make, make it direct, but also as a choice of indirect. So to really take advantage of this beautiful site in the process. Yeah. Is there, is there good and I, I also just want to make sure um, we commend you on the, the resolution of the space of the building. It, it, it is um, one of the most carefully resolved, most spatially planned for section, siting. Um, and, and really, there's a kind of elegance and convincing. I think the one you've shown us is very convincing. Um, I just want to say something really quick matter that I just, you know, and this is the first time I've seen this project, and to me, you're talking about siting, or in Georgetown, and to, when I think of Georgetown, I think exclusiveness, or exclusivity, and for this to be incorporating the public on so many levels, I would like to applaud you. Not only are you bringing people across into Georgetown, you're flying people in, you're, you're letting people access you know, access this building and really it's become public. And I can't think of really many buildings in Georgetown that do that. And I think it's really great. Thank you. It's the slope of the ramp, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, before I we ever talked about training, um, there's you don't have an answer that question. Come on. Detail. What's the 16th slope here? Um, there is a 112 alongside the building, but I guess it comes 120, so 121. So, not. so going up to the roof, it's a much more gentler slope. Going down from the bridge to the waterfront, it's generally 112. Yeah. Is that right? Well, actually, well, from this, uh, yeah, from the bridge to the water. Is most of it 120? Mm -hmm. Is most of the ramp 1 to 20? Top. No. So what is it? 1 to 12. And it will 1 to 12 to the building, and then 1 to 16 to the site, and then... All right, so... It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's 1 to 12. Uh, 1 to 12. That's actually... And also 1 to 12. So, so to the, but when you're going in the building and then going up, is that one of the problems? Uh, no, as, as you go up, this is all that one Unless I'm misunderstanding something, you, I'm looking at this section, because I think it's so key. This is that level that we keep coming back to where the ramp finally gets down here, right? And then the ramp goes down here and around and comes back down here. And I look at this, I, I just wish that you had given some people some options. You know, like, even if this had to be a state, you know, it was a way for somebody, something, to get on down to the water. And if the narrative is, how do I go from Wisconsin Avenue down the ghost of 34th Street to the water, I think this was an opportunity for you to give some more options to going two blocks out of your way around the building. This is the sort of core of split. You have to go you have to in the building. Uh, yeah. uh, this would be a vestibule into the core, and then you come down the stairway. It would be... 
if not always resolved. Um, but the, he can make provocative things, there's no doubt about it. And I think I would encourage you in the future to try to find a way to close those loops a little bit more. Because you have a great ability to make things that are very tempting and very interesting. But I think the second half of that is to try and figure out where they go so you can test them. But I, I certainly have enjoyed working. It may not seem like it at times. I, know, but I, very much, I very much have enjoyed working with you, and I, and I think this this drawing here, which is the first time I've seen it, some of these perspectives and that section are really exquisitely crafted. So, not I'm I'm so glad we're at this point um, in your development, and uh, I really. I appreciated the, the jury's comments. And what I want to say about this project is that I think it is a very descendant. And I just, we touched on it briefly, um, but I just want to point out a, a couple of things. And, and not your presentation style, as we've sort of acknowledged, you know, Matt has given you some, or I guess Ms. Steve gave you some pointers on, on that. And that is also part of the um, deceptiveness of this project because it is an intensely ambitious project. But if you could imagine, right, the tram coming and depositing however many people to this point. The Sino Canal goes all the way to the Cumberland Gap. 
it is a major <coughs> circuit cable in here. This is the end of M Street. The urban opportunity for creating an event building here is actually not something that we can, the energy of that, we cannot define it today, and you can't define it. But what you've done is you've created a spatial narrative that gets you from M Street through a natural environment into a facility that has this extraordinary um, potential to bring that activity out into the public realm. If you think about that edge of Georgetown and M Street, there is not another building in this area that remotely proposes the kind of public and cultural energy that, that this vessel um, could, could propose. So in that way, what you're seeing is somewhat understated in its own way because this really is a, a diamond that is being formed by all of these cultural and urban pressures. And that's what results in this, in this form. So, Nader, I want to commend you on, um, on getting to this, this point and um, presenting and and basically, in your own way, bringing um, life, incredible life, to this part of our city. So.